Okay, uh, well, this this was only a matter of time before we dealt with the uh, waves passing through three mediums. Let's go ahead and see what we want. The statement is, light of angular frequency omega passes from medium 1 through a slab thickness d of medium 2 and into medium 3, for instance, from water and through glass into air, uh, as in, in the figure, um, show that the transmission coefficient for normal incidence is 1 over t uh, is equal to 1 over 4 n1 n3 n uh, parentheses n1 plus n3 squared and then uh, yeah everything else there as you see I'll give you a second to read that now all three media are linear and homogeneous so we can assume that mu1 equal mu2 equal mu3 equal mu0 now, uh, these definitions are definitely going to be catching up with you at some point, so be aware that you cannot always assume the mu's are there, but for this stuff, they're pretty close generally. All right, let's sketch it out, what we have to deal with. Um, we see here that we have uh, labeled on one to the left uh, some uh, medium one. In this case, I think this is a glass or water. And then area two is glass, area three is air, whatever. As you see, it has thickness D, so we're at the origin of the XY plane, so Z equals zero there. Then Z equals some, uh, some distance later is D, so the origin or the length of distance or area two is D. All right, we see the image. It's pretty well sketched, no big deal. Uh, however, <laughs> here's where it gets messy. Okay, so for, um, here we go. So for location one, we have these sets of equations, okay, since we're polarized in the x direction, unless otherwise specified. Here we go. We're prop uh, propagating the z, polarizing the x for e, and then the same thing for b, uh, polarized to the y, and propagating z. As you see, we have every, uh, we have a bracket for every um, position within the mediums. Okay, and we gotta be very careful how to uh, orchestrate this to where we're not overlaying with the um, uh, labeling. So in medium two, we have reflected and um, incident on that. And then, you know, we'll label them as such, but just be very careful. Clearly, the only thing that gets through on side three is a transmitted wave. So that's the only thing we care about. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens. The boundary conditions are E1 parallel equal E2 parallel, B1 parallel equal B2 parallel at each boundary, uh, assuming again that the mu's equal each other. So what this tells us is that at Z equals zero, we have uh, EI plus ER, equal little er plus little e or little l for e then the magnetic field part and then finally uh for the last part we have ei minus er is equal to b or beta which is v1 over v2 um yeah and uh <laughs> so we or rather we just simplified that uh for that second equation and yeah it's gonna be gross and then we have another boundary at z equals zero or z equals d. So plug that through. We see what we have there. Plug that through again. Simplify for alpha, which is v2 over v3. Same thing, different day. Now we have four equations. And the problem is to eliminate er, e little r, and el to obtain a single equation for the transmitted based on the incident wave. Okay. So what we have to do is add the first two to eliminate ER, boom, boom. And then we have to add the last two to eliminate EL, boom, boom. And now you see if we su uh, subtract the last two to eliminate E little r, we get boom, boom. Okay, so we have something with T, something with T, something with little r, little r, little l, and I. Now we plug these two, uh, the second and third line things into the first equation and we should have everything we need to to put in terms of E, T, and E, I. All right, so let's do that. And uh, as you see, just a little bit of algebra, uh, but be very careful plugging everything in. 
nestle weights very quickly you see how we have a factor of one half factor that to the left and we have et e to the i three e to the i k 3d and both of them push it out to the right and uh yeah be very careful since the e were in the denominators we get, went ahead and put them to the negative powers so uh i guess we could factor them out too i guess we'll do that later uh yeah never mind i lied because now we're gonna do uh by grouping whatever so we push the two over to the left hand side so we get four ei and now it's simply a matter of simplifying this thing by factoring um or expanding out the one plus alpha one plus beta and foiling out the one minus alpha one minus beta okay uh, we can't really uh, factor out the E's yet because the two exponentials are different signs. But what we can do is factor by grouping. So we have a 1 plus alpha that needs to have an E to the negative and an E to the uh, positive I. And then uh, alpha plus beta, again, factor by grouping. Pretty cool. Uh, push that negative inside, though. And we said we get e to the negative i and then uh, minus e to the positive i. Everything else is the same. But if we notice, when we have the sum of a positive and negative, we get two cosines. And if we have the difference of a negative and positive, we have a 2i sine. That's just a definition from the complex exponentials. Easy enough. We like that. So both terms have a 2 in it. So we can factor that out, and if, we find, if we're trying to find the ratio, we want EI over ET, so divide ET over, divide the 4 from the EI over, and we get 2 over 4, everything in the brackets, times that exponential on the end. Now the transmission coefficient is, well, we have to be very careful how we uh, simplify this, don't we? We have V3, Epsilon 3, V1, E1, or Epsilon 1, since we went from 1 to 3, and then we have E of, uh, looks like my subscript stopped working, excuse me. Okay, but that's supposed to be uh, E squared T naught. Uh, yeah, I must have made a mess somewhere else. I apologize for that. Uh, but the subscripts get carried away in this, so that should be cleaned up. Nonetheless, what we're trying to do now is V3, V1, we'll separate that. And we'll multiply mu naught times e3 epsilon 3 and then mu naught times e1, which is perfectly fine because mu naught is acceptable uh, since we're multiplying both numerator and denominator. And what we really want is uh, e tilde t squared over ei squared. And um, okay, so the reason why we substituted the or put the mu's in there so that way. We have a mu and an epsilon 1 that go to v1 squared and a mu and an epsilon 3 since they're all equal to a v3. And uh, we see that they cancel the v's. And we see now that we have v1 over v3, uh, which is equal to alpha times beta. Uh, yep, that'll work. And uh, with that, we can now move forward with the... Uh, fun part so we want the uh one over t so that's one over alpha and then we have uh the vertical ei squared et squared we'll just combine them it's the same thing we got to find um don't let the analysis teachers tell you or know that i said that uh but for our purposes it'll work um so anyways again uh that square with the uh vertical sign that means modulus, and we just need to multiply by a complex conjugate. So be very, very careful when applying that. That being said, uh, we can pretty much maneuver how we want. The only thing to worry about is that exponential, and we see that they cancel, so we're good there. And uh, everything else gets a square. Now, since we're doing this in this fashion, I highlight it in red cosine squared so we can put in a sine squared term. And that's what we do. The reason why is because now we can uh, distribute that 1 plus alpha beta squared into the 1 minus sine squared, factor out the sine squared, and get a lot of cancellations on the sine squared term. It's really just a simplification trick. That's about it. 
And then we boil that all the way down to 1 over 4 alpha beta bracket 1 plus alpha beta squared minus 1 minus alpha squared times 1 minus beta squared sine squared k2d. Uh, okay, that's, you know, close the bracket. And now we know that n1 is equal to c over v1, n2 is equal to c over v2, n3 is equal to c over v3. So alpha being n3 over n2, beta being n2 over n1. What do we have here? Plug it all in and, uh, we'll, you know, maneuver away, cancel what you can. Um, yep, 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 a whole lot of yep. So after that, we notice that finding a common denominator uh, for the n2 squared, pretty easy to do, in my opinion. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. And then, yeah, we multiply everything by by n1. That'll work. And uh, n1 squared just to keep, or n1 just to keep everything happy. It all simplifies down, as you see, to the box, but dang, that was a messy problem. That could have been a lot worse, but uh, here soon we will definitely be using the result of this particular equation, and we'll be good to go.